The information is still evolving about the transmission of, um, of the virus that causes COVID-19 illness. And, um, you know, we have seen limited person-to-person -person spread. Um, primarily, the person-to-person -person transmission that we've been seeing has been in China primarily. Here in the U.S., um, uh, currently, as of um, mid-February, we've only seen about 15 cases of COVID in the United States associated with um, uh, travel to China. And of these, um, there were only two that were associated with person-to-person -person spread. So currently, right now, we're asking healthcare providers to be really vigilant for looking for um, illnesses that might be compatible with COVID-19 illness, and to also encourage healthcare providers to take good travel histories so that, you know, we also understand, you know, that there might be that risk exposure um, element with these, uh, with these um, individuals who might have these illnesses. Um, in, uh, in the United States, the CDC has issued guidance um, with regard to what clinicians can be looking for. And we always strongly encourage um, clinicians to go on the CDC website because things are changing so rapidly just to keep themselves abreast of the most up-to-date information and what are the current criteria that we're looking for. With novel and emerging infections, we don't know too much at the beginning, so there's always the challenge of dealing with potentially changing case definitions, potential information that becomes more um, evident later on as we get more information. So, you know, we always um, try to get the balance of, you know, ensuring that we get the message out there to clinicians that sometimes things will change. Sometimes when you're looking for illnesses, you might need to modify what you're looking for based on the, uh, the newest information that's available.